All right. We are here at AES having fun, continuing the fun by snagging awesome people who are roaming around, checking out all the cool gear. Uh, my name is Mitch Thomas. I'm with Sound Toys. I'll let this gentleman introduce himself. Hi, I'm Jeremy Dawson. I'm a producer, songwriter, band guy from uh, Shiny Toy Guns and a band called MXMS. And MXNS, that's a relatively new project? Yeah, it's about a year and a half, two years old. It's, uh, it's myself and a singer named Ariel Levitan. It's sort of a, a modern cinematic take on really, really dark trip hop. Oh, cool. So imagine like Massive Attack meets Mazzy Star, but fully modern production and stuff. That sounds Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, man. That sounds awesome. So you, you have a couple albums or a single, an album? We have a, we put, um, you know, we're, we're kind of going the avant-garde way. We have a couple of vinyls out. Um, and we're, we just finished a mixtape that's coming out on cassette. And we're playing uh, next week in L.A. at the Echo. And then we have three singles, the mixtape, and a tour coming up this fall. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've been a huge fan of Shiny Toy Guns for a long time. So you the, have, yeah, many years. Big, big time. So, uh, and uh, are you working on new stuff there as well? We're, we're on hiatus right now. Oh. I'm, I'm doing this. Um, Kara, our singer, she's working on her record. Oh, cool. And um, my drummer, Mike, he's in a really cool band in L.A. They're, I think they're playing this Sunday. I don't know when this is going to roll, but... Um, <laughs> That's Sunday the this this Sunday whatever it was just yeah, go there show up <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chad has a has a group called Ron R O N N E that's like super imagine if if Toto was twenty two what he would what they would sound like today it's sort of like that it's really like just deep tropical really fun like barbecue pop nice so we're we're all sort of busy creating what we would sound like if you took the Mr. Potato Head apart. <laughs> but Right, so all the individual elements are yeah. growing on their own now, right? Yeah, we're just taking a creative break to do that. That's cool. Well, I mean, you guys did quite a few uh, awesome albums, so it's... Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed them all. So, uh, any other uh, any other project? You, you're doing some production outside of yeah, that as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm... I'm just in the beginning phases of scoring this um, amazing film they're shooting right now, and I can't really reveal the cast, but it's ridiculous. Like, it's really, Nicolas really Cage. Top I know it's Nicolas Cage. It's, it's not Nick Cage. What are you guys doing? Oh um, man! But it's um, it, it's based on the you know the the opiate epidemic in the in the New England area. I don't want to give too much of the script away, but it's a true story. And it's sure, it's really not the cage that sound. It's a gotta get out of here, get to the point. <laughs> um, but it's it, the script. I'm not like a script reader, but I've read several scripts, and I, this is the first time I, I picked it up and read it, and I was like, oh my god, like it just floored me. So I, it's, this is my first feature film to actually compose, and it's all piano driven and like really dark somber tones. Like well, I like this guy. Yeah, so we can get a little, little darker than this guy though. <laughs> um, so it's it's really exciting. It's going to be a lot of work, but um, that's awesome. That sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. That that's some serious like creativity. Yeah, it's going to take some time. I, I I personally don't know how much time it's going to take, but some of my friends that have done this are like, yeah, it's you think you're going to just sit down and write something? Wait till they edit. And you have to redo everything <laughs> to move out of the way of the foley, and they want to change the key and the pitch, and oh, yeah, yes, can't yeah. wait for that. There's there's a lot of pieces in the puzzle, yeah, to get to the end of something like that. And the composer's like last on the list of his. It's like it's got it because the picture is what matters, right? And that's what we're interpreting compositionally, right? So you get you get the extra fun job of going all right well we're we're finally done and now you've got three and a half minutes to finish it all and <laughs> yeah oh it, that's gonna happen but that you know what that happens in music too like it does if music worked like like things like normal and quiet and easy then artists wouldn't be able to do that we don't know how to do that right where we know how to it's fight or flight and it's a fire alarm and that's when the my just for me like that's how I work the best is when like there's no way we're going to finish that by Thursday and then right. it gets finished by Thursday if you told me I had two weeks I would be late you got to <laughs> tell me it's due tomorrow 
<laughs> right. or I'll play on my phone and, the, and chase a butterfly or do all that stuff. It's the sit in the back of the class high school mentality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the mohawk and the Heck yeah. breakfast club. All right, so uh, there has to be a reason that, as I've said with all of our artists, that we invited you to come sit under this logo. The logo. Uh, I, I imagine you, you use sound toys on water. everything. Everything. Yeah, I mean, especially, um, it was always, a, so the thing is, like, I work a lot in synth, and I'll work a lot in, um, I, you know, years ago, it was actually working with a lot of, like, Moog Tauruses and Prophet 600s and stuff like that, and, and you know, like, I poured a 32-ounce Coke on my DX27, <laughs> so that's toast. Um, a lot of my synths have went to the landlord because I had to sell them, pay rent whenever times were tough. Right. Um, and so, I, like a lot of producers, I've really been starting, the, the soft synth has really come up right. over the past 10 years. And, but in order to get, a, to get a good sound, you have to modify it, period. And I'm not talking about turning the knobs on the soft synth. It's about building really good bus chains. Right. And um, the, thing, the thing that I've found is like you can't have a synth come out without decapitator on it. It's just not going to work. Nice. And that's, um, I will have as many decapitators in a session as I will in EQ, usually. They're awesome. just there. I just turn it on. Even if it's just barely moving, that nasty hair that <laughs> comes with a soft scent that sometimes you can't even hear. Right. You got to get rid of it or you got to break it. And decapitator breaks it. Right. And when you can break it and then smack that down with a little comp, you have some good hair on that thing, not just brittle noise going on. And that, and it, you know, same thing with vocals. Same thing with everything. Like that edge. The I can't afford twenty-five culture vultures. <laughs> um, some people can. I can't. Yeah. The um, I also can't. Yeah. The, the UAD culture vulture is one of the biggest hogs on that processor card, literally. It takes, a, I, those guys do good work. That's a, that's a super heavy DSP it model is, that they've done. I, so I, it, my tower, um, bless her heart, yeah. is, not, <laughs> is not a trash can. It's a, it's a few years old. Right. And um, I can have like two culture vultures, but that, that decapitator is going to do its business, and I can have 30 of them open, and I'm going to get what I need out of that. And it's the same basic functionality as a culture vulture, but in a, with, you know, it's got Toyota Prius gas mileage on it. And that's, <laughs> you got to have that kind of flow to, to get a session done, unless you want to spend $10,000 on a computer and you're not getting like this. There's not really a difference but to me between those two plugins. It's great gain. Right. And of course, you also have uh, recall. So you're, instead of uh, yeah. 15 culture vultures that you're trying to reset correctly i mean yeah. culture vulture is great product and we're a huge fan of hardware we're not we're not really trying to eliminate hardware we're just trying to give people access to the sound that can't, yeah like you said they can't get it and I'm, and I'm speaking to people who who are they have a laptop and they barely could afford that because they're and they're like how can i make some really dope stuff and um right now i want to make it right now i don't want to wait for my next six months of paycheck so i can buy a three thousand dollar preamp what can I do today? Right. And that's um, and the thing with sound toys, like if you just Google, like the Pink record is like all sound toys. The yeah. you know like the, there's the records that you're hearing, like you're gonna hear Tony Maserati come in here later, and I, I work in the studio with him. We're in the same building, and um, like go look at a Tony Maserati session. It's just sound toys all over. And Tony's the top mixer in the in the world, basically. We, we not love a, Tony. He's very nice to yeah. us. Yeah, and. Um, it's it's a mixing tool. It's a creative tool. And I know we're we're only focusing on decapitator, no, but it's, so what? Yeah. So what? Creatively, what what are your favorites? Creatively, in? like if I'm if I want to like if I have something and it's not doing something, and I have a sound I want to use and I can't get it right, or a, a melody that's a little mm, it's not so good, or I think it's not so good because it's not tough enough, <laughs> I can just crush it. And it, it brings it to a completely different level, a completely different genre. Right. And um, that's something you're not going to... When you can change the genre of a song with, a, with one plugin or two plugins, that's crazy to me. <laughs> and there's not a bundle that does that. But the, this is pre-effect rack. 
Right. So that, this is when, to me, this is when Sound Toys really took a hard left into a different world because um, I don't want to keep naming other companies, but no, there's, there's right. a the bunch. Re the real world is, is out there. We yeah, there, yeah. So the um, one trick that I've always done, and Chad, my production partner in Shines With Guns does, is we are obsessed with not miking up guitars and going through that rigmarole and using the NI guitar rig. Yeah, it's, it's really it's good. Again, Hog City on smaller computers. So, but we use, we don't use it on guitars only. We use it on everything, on vocals, vocal buses, drums, and cool. And you can just flip through the presets like everything else and come up with these amazing sounds. And um, but we have usually, especially with the older complete bundles, we had an option of four, maybe five. And then all of a sudden, when you select that track, and um, and in the the feeders of your your threads on yep. your CPU. Bam, through the roof, and the whole thing starts to crumble apart, and then it, it can't keep up with the sample rate, and then you're in, you're in trouble. Well, I'm cool. I'm glad we fit in that gap where it, it, you get more creativity. For and, your... um, and then, and then a, but if, with effects rack, yeah, never, never happens. So, effects rack, those of you who don't know, is where it's it's like a rack, and you you have all these different, all these individual pieces of sound toys can be jumbled together and arranged in a full chain of plugins on one plugin. And you can open 30 of them. Or I can anyway. <laughs> yeah. And um, you do. And I do, yeah. And that, so that, um, so on the drum bus, there's your, instead of like pulling your hair out, like building, like, okay, I need a comp, I need a limiter, I need the snare, I gotta, I gotta do all this stuff, I gotta put a delay on the tom, I gotta move that over the left. You just put this bundle on it, on the whole bus, and then just slowly manipulate a couple things that you like because the presets are built for that, like, you know, edgy drums, exactly. rock vocal, and, like, I can just open that up, and I just have to dial a couple of things in. But while I'm writing, I got a vocal right then. Right. I got a drum sound right then. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm Because I'm, I have ADD and I'm 22 <laughs> years old. I'm a millennial. I got to get back to my phone. There's something on Instagram, so I got to move, 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 move. And that's what, right. that's what effects rack is key for because it's all set up right there and it does the same business that these big guitar plugins do on a guitar it's right. the same business on a bass but it, it's all about workflow right so yeah you, when you're in the creative flow you got to move yeah and it's and it's like what 400 bucks or something yeah it's uh, 499 yeah 499 so and you get the whole freaking that's weird because like <laughs> it's not weird it's great but like you know normally like when you go we go purchase a Waves bundle. You know, it's a Volkswagen Jetta. It's like, <laughs> which is fine, but you get a lot of a lot of great stuff there's for that. A lot but, there. but you can do, you. There's so many things that you can use Sound Toys for. Sound Toys doesn't say Sound Toys for guitars or Sound Toys vocal processing plugins. It's a, it's an everything, basic, package plugin yeah. to affect what you're working on. Well, that's what we we're shooting for each time with each one of our effects. We kind of want to have something that people can take us to new places because you know we know what we have in mind with it but everything we put out people have come back to us with new uses that we're like never thought of that that's awesome yeah devilog deluxe on a brass section never thought of yeah it. oh yeah it's because it it the that when you're recording horns properly there's a lot going on on the top end right and that's going to get in the way of the strings and and the and the flute there's all kinds of stuff especially when you're bringing that into pop and hip hop because they love horns yeah and it's like and and uh, the guys who have money they want to go in like, like like screw that you know put the ASR10 down let's get a horn section let's start, spend a couple of grand go to Ocean Way and let's blow out a quartet and, and let's make it happen <laughs> and um Devilog Deluxe, the first thing it does is whack off that 12K and break it. Right. Just break it. And you <laughs> keep turning the knob and it, it break. It's major. And it's that thick 1176 saturation thud, weird low mid thing. And just by turning one knob. Yeah. That's a... There, I'll, I'll show you a song later that, that cool. the devil lock, if I turn it off... It's 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 a piece of garbage, that and there's and there's this many plugins on that sound, but that <laughs> plugin is the is the difference between garbage and oh my gosh, how did you make that bass line? Wow, 
Nice. I'll, I'll show it to you later. Yeah, like, absolutely. Cool, man. Well, I'm not going to keep you all day because I know you want to geek out a little bit more before you have to take off for a rehearsal, right? So <laughs> Yeah, we have a rehearsal today. So I uh, appreciate you stopping by and chatting with us. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, of course, much. man. Thank yeah. you guys for everything. It's Thanks been a lot, a, man. Cool. Yeah. Looking forward to the new music. Out. <laughs>